All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So the NFL Combine is officially here. It's it's taking place this entire week. And in this one, I wanted to talk about some of the players that, uh, in my opinion, Jets fans should be maybe paying attention to, right? These numbers, at the end of the day, at, in my opinion, right? I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, it's not as important as the game tape, right? The college film, the college career, the college resume, that, in my opinion, is number one. But the combine is a useful tool for teams to not only just meet with, you know, uh, specific prospects, but also just get a better feel, you know, of how they, you know, how they're going to test out physically and mentally and, and whatnot. So with that being said, let's talk about the first prospect here. I would say right now, the guy that's being linked to the Jets at spot number 10 the most since the draft process really started, Talise Fuaga, right tackle from Oregon State. At this point in time, we know what Fuaga brings to the table. A dominant run blocker, two great, great seasons back to back, and not only just run blocking, but also pass pro, has really good size, projects well to the next level on that right side, although some do think Fuaga is maybe a better fit at right guard, but you know, personally, I, I think, you know, if a team drafts him to be the right tackle, it's not like they're idiots or like, what 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 is this team doing, right? I think Fuaga right now, at, again, as a prospect, he's being mocked anywhere from like 10 to 20, but more so in that 10 to 13 range. I think the Raiders make a lot of sense for, you know, for Fuaga as well. Uh, but what's interesting here, you look at the senior bowl, right? Fuwaga absolutely dominated at the senior bowl. So when it's all said and done in a, you know, month, month or two, right? We're, we're approaching the draft. There's a very good chance that Fuwaga entered the draft process as a high-end first round pick. He has the great college resume. He dominated the senior bowl. He could potentially dominate the combine and we would assume dominate his pro day because that's what every you know, prospect does pretty for the most part, right? The last pro day that I feel like just went awry completely for like a big name player was Teddy Bridgewater all those years ago, uh, where just the throwing portion just was not, it, it just was not, um, you know, all, all that effective, right? He opted to choose to throw without gloves. And that was just something that he wasn't comfortable with. And from that point on, like Bridgewater's stock, like dropped a lot, but Again, if you're looking at Fuwaga, he could essentially go four for four in the draft process, right? Again, film, senior bowl, combine, pro day. I mean, and look, of course, we're talking about, uh, you know, a couple guys, a couple offensive linemen going ahead of Fuwaga here. But at the end of the day, we can go back to literally last season when there was a player that was being mocked to the Jets or, or right, right around that 15 mark, uh, that were really the 13 to 15 mark before the Aaron Rodgers trade, somebody who I felt like could have made sense, Darnell Wright. The Chicago Bears shocked everybody and selected Wright at spot number nine. So we've seen players like this go higher than expected. Number two, tight end Brock Bowers. Now, Bowers is considered by many people out there as one of the best tight end prospects in a long, long, long time. Um, you know, better than Hawkinson, better than Noah Fant, better than Dalton Kincaid of last season. Uh, he's he's really, you know, up there as far as just a draft prospect is concerned. Explosive, playmaker, always comes down with the big play. He would uh, have moments where... You know, the defense knew exactly where the football was going to go. They knew Georgia's offense was going to be giving Bowers the football, and there was nothing they can do. Bowers was just, like, unstoppable. And the thought of, you know, Bowers catching passes from Aaron Rodgers with Garrett Wilson on the outside and Brees Hall behind Rodgers, I mean, you could be looking at uh, a really, really dynamic trio for literally years on end. We could also see Nathaniel Hackett uh, and Aaron Rodgers roll out a lot of two tight end sets with Conklin and Bowers in this scenario. And we also know that based off of the video that the Jets released last season of Joe Douglas literally in the war room, talking about potential draft picks at, at spot number 15, he was considering taking Michael Mayer at 15. Michael Mayer ended up being a second round pick by the Las Vegas Raiders and we're one year removed from that day, right? So we have one more, you know, uh, Tyler Conklin's a year older. He has one less year left on his contract. Uh, same could be said with Jeremy Rucker, another disappoint, uh, disappointing season from CJ Uzama, right? So, 
you look at th all those factors and then you factor in that Bowers is a much better draft prospect than Michael Mayer, I mean, you got to think that Joe Douglas would be interested at this point in time. Now, I will say this, it does seem, or I guess it did seem, like Douglas, you know, looked at the offensive line like there was no issues there whatsoever a year ago, and that it was going to be perfectly fine. This year, obviously, that, that's got to change, right? That has got to change for, for, you know, crystal clear reasons. So maybe there's a change of thinking here, but I could see... Douglas potentially pulling the trigger, especially if we can't, well, first off, if there's not, uh, you know, an offensive lineman worth taking at spot number 10, and we can't figure out a trade down scenario. Okay, so next up are two players that I feel like would make sense for the New York Jets if they want to trade down. And I'm not talking about down to like, you know, 11 or 12, just like a few spots back, but anywhere from like 15 to like 25, like just like a, a big trade down, right? Somebody wants to come up for a QB or what have you. Um, First player up is left tackle from Arizona, Jordan Morgan, somebody who I feel like is not being talked about enough. Six foot six, 320 pounds, former first team all Pac-12 last season in 2023 and in 2022. He's physical. He fits the system, right? The zone blocking attack. I feel like he projects well as the team's starting left tackle for, and not just, you know, specifically with the Jets, but multiple teams out there. I think he projects to the NFL really, really well. Uh, he has a great college resume. It doesn't look like he gets caught in quicksand all that often. He does have explosiveness and he's quick on his feet and pass pro. I really like Jordan Morgan, right? So if you were to tell me that the Jets can pick up a second round pick in this year's class and maybe a future first round pick, so we have two, two ones next year and we load up a second in this year's class and we can shoot down to like the, the early 20s or the mid 20s or something like that, we can land Jordan Morgan and right? This is assuming that the Jets, you know, they, they maybe sign a Mike on Wenu in free agency for your contract. So boom, we already have our starting, uh, you know, right tackle proven NFL pro, uh, right in the prime of his career at right. Now we're trading back again, adding extra draft capital. And we're getting a guy who, in my opinion, is an upgrade over Dwayne Brown and upgrade over Makai Becton on a cheap first year contract for the next five years, four to five seasons. That sounds pretty good. And again, I might be higher on Morgan than uh, some people out there, but I really feel like, you know, and it's not to say that he's going to be some top five or top 10 left tackle his first season or anything like that, but I just look at him as a gifted prospect. I think there's just a lot of tools there, a lot a lot of things to like matched with the athleticism, and, and now you're talking about team need and scheme fit. I do feel like it makes sense. And last but not least is a pretty controversial uh, player here. It's JC Latham, right tackle from Alabama. Uh, much like Fuaga, just a stri like strictly a right tackle. Somebody who is big, imposing, powerful, strong. Tons of production in the running game. Somebody who's absolutely massive at six foot six, three hundred and sixty pounds. We'll see what the official weigh-in uh, is this week. But you know, if you're looking at just an absolute mauler, Latham's that guy. Right, production in the top end, you know, the uh, best conference in college football, Alabama, the SEC, for two straight seasons. Uh, and also, too, this is Joe Douglas making the pick. We've seen him, right, because people keep talking about, like, the big board, right? Joe Douglas is going to trust his big board and whatnot, and that's fine. But it's not to say that, that his big board is always correct. Everybody's big board is a little bit different. For example, in his first uh, years, or really his first draft with the Jets, he chose Makai Becton the size the upside over Tristan Wirfs and over time Wirfs has been the you know the obviously much better player here for Tampa Bay um but we've seen Douglas go down that route before right where it's more like the Trent Balky uh idea where it's like okay this guy's big he's physical he's explosive he has a really high ceiling we can get him in the building and develop him as opposed to maybe the safe bet so does he go down that route again with a guy like JC Latham where you're betting on, you know, just the power, the, the, again, the strength, the run game dominance. Um, but I do feel like, and, and look, some people are really, really high on Latham. Some people are not, you know, I, I've seen it go both ways. Personally, I, I like him as a prospect and I am, you know, I am a Jet fan here. So when it comes to all these different guys, whether we're talking O-line or not, 
I always ask the question, are they upgrades over what we currently have? And in my opinion, the answer is yes. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. It's tough to, you know, to talk about like the mid round prospects because we don't have that second rounder, which is, you know, obviously unfortunate. So we'll be monitoring, you know, some of these prospects that are expected to go like anywhere from round two to round four. Uh, you know, who are going to be the risers, who are going to be the fallers. I mean, even like, like we're not even that far into the draft process. And we've seen guys that were projected like uh, late round three, early round four guys already being talked about to go uh, going in like mid round two and vice versa. So there's a lot of changing throughout the process. So anyway, let me know your thoughts down below in the, co uh, in the, in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.